this tutorial we're going to use Photoshop CC 2020 to go through class numbered book chapter 4 which is all about layer basics and we're going to create this Hawaii uh, postcard. So when we're working with Photoshop we have to consider the fact that sometimes we're working with what's called layers. Layers are think of them as multiple windows stacked in front of each other and whatever is on the top is what you're seeing in front. So that layer stacking order does make a big difference in how you are going to create and lay things together. Alright, so let's go ahead and do a file open and grab that start file of the pineapple. Let's do a file save as. Change it to first initial last name, underscore Photoshop, classroom in a book, chapter 4. And we want to save it as a PSD. And send save. I've already got it once. Alright, so let's go ahead and say yes. So we've got our working file. We always do that to make sure that we've got a copy that we can go back to if something happens to what we have created. So let's go ahead and make sure we're all in the same workspace. Let's go to Window, Workspace. Let's make sure you're on Essentials. Reset your Essentials if you have to. All right, so in Workspace, we have a few things going on. You Over here on the right-hand side, you'll see this one called Layers. Layers lets us know what is what are the different documents within this uh, image itself. So right now the layers, some of them are turned off so you can use the eyeball to make things appear and reappear. Uh, we know which one is active by the one it, that is grayed out. And we see our postage is our top layer. If I take that postage and move it behind the pineapple you see now you can't see it. So it's kind of get an idea of how those uh, that layer order works. So sometimes you think you're doing something and it's not really working. It's usually because you have an issue with the layers itself. So if we look at our original, we had a kind of a beach scene going in. Let's go ahead and open up our end file so you can see what it looks like. So our end file, we see we've got this beach scene. So we've got the pineapple, some flowers, this beach. Uh, Hawaii with some gradient. So we're going to play with creating all of those different elements. So let's go ahead and add the beach. So let's go file and open and grab the beach.psd. Now right now Photoshop's having a bug. Usually you can take this layer and go up and drag it down into this tab, but right now that's not working and so far there aren't a lot of really good reasons why. So I'm going to go ahead and undock my final pineapple with my initials. I'm going to go here, grab my beach. I'm going to go ahead and drag that beach straight over onto my pineapple. Now I'm going to go ahead and redock that. I can tell it's redocked because it's blue. I'm going to go ahead and close that one down. All right, so now I want to be able to play with these, these layers a little bit. So let's go ahead and instead of calling this layer one, let's double click on it and name it beach. It's always best to be an organized designer so that you can find things very easily, uh, especially if you're looking at little tiny thumbnails that can make it really, really hard. Let's go ahead and do a control S and save what we have so far. All right, so we have gone ahead and transferred that over. So we saw how we could uh, view those individual layers. So let's go ahead and take a peek. Let's turn off our pineapple layer and just take a peek at our beach layer. So on our beach layer, uh, let's go ahead and turn off our background as well. So all we see is the beach. Let's go ahead and go to layer. We're going to be on that beach one. Go to layer. Come down here to layer style. And we want to go ahead and add a stroke. Think of a stroke as an outline. So right now we want to tell it what we want it to do. We want the size to be about 5 pixels. Uh, we want it to be positioned inside. See what happens if we go center, kind of we lose part of it. If you're on the outside, it goes just to the out, which works fine unless you're on the out outside of something. For this, let's work on the inside. Our opacity is 100%, which means we don't want it to be see-through. And this is our color. We can either choose a color from the palette or we can use the picker. Uh, maybe we want to go ahead and scroll in. I'm going to use my space bar, come down. I'm going to grab this purple out of these flowers. Might be a nice color. Or maybe I want to do a green. Maybe the green is better. Or maybe I want this kind of green over here. So once you've got a color, say OK. And once you're happy with all that, let's say OK. 
into a control S and a control minus to zoom out a few times. All right, so now we want to go ahead and rearrange a few layers. So let's go ahead and make all the layers visible. So make postage, make Hawaii, make flower, make pineapple, all visible. And you see that depending on where you brought your beach in, it could very well be behind your pineapple. So if it is, you can just take and rearrange those elements until you get it where you want it to be. So I want the flower to go over the beach, but on top of the pineapple. So you can see how it's really easy to change that layer order as you need to. All right, so maybe we want to change the opacity of a layer. Let's go ahead and go to our postage. Opacity is how see-through something is. So I'm going to control plus and zoom in to see that. And I'm going to grab that postage layer. Over on my layers, I've got one called opacity. And you can see I can determine just how see-through that postage is going to be. So I don't want it to be incredibly prominent. Let's go ahead and take it down to about 25. And we're going to say OK. We'll save it. Control S. Ooh. Deselect. Control S to save. That was fun. All right. So let's go ahead and play with a few other things. Let's go ahead and turn off our beach, turn off our flower, turn off our Hawaii, turn off our postage. We just want to see this pineapple layer. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. So we're going to go to right click, come up and duplicate layer here at the top. So we're actually going to have a copy of that pineapple. You're wondering why we want to do that. We want to do it so we can play with what's called a blending mode so we can make it have a little bit better effect. So on the copy one, which is over the pineapple, come up here to where it says normal and come down here to overlay. Now see how much brighter and how much more texture that pineapple has just with making that little small change with the overlay. All right, so let's go ahead and try something with our postage. Let's grab our postage layer and instead of just plain normal, let's go ahead and change it to multiply. And that's going to make it uh, change a little bit as we get more things underneath. So you can't really see it doing a lot at this point, but you will in a little bit. Let's do a control S and save what we have so far. All right, let's go back to that beach layer. So let's click on our beach. And if we look at our beach, we could got kind of big, kind of huge. We don't necessarily want it to be that way. So we can do an edit. We can do free transform. And it's going to give us those transformation grabber bars. And we're going to go ahead and resize that image. I'm going to grab my move tool kind of move up, oh, grab the wrong one, moved it down. And if I go to the side, I can turn it just a little bit. So maybe I want it to be turned about 15 degrees. You see you've got the bar here at the top that lets you go through and change some of those items. When you're happy with it, go ahead and push that check or the transformation. All right, let's go ahead and make that flower layer visible. So we want to make sure that the beach is kind of tucked behind the flower. I'm going to grab that move tool and you can kind of move it around. Depends on where you want to put it. I'm going to put it here in the center. And let's do a control S and save. All right, let's go ahead and go to our background layer. So if you remember the original, the end one has some clouds here. So let's go ahead and create that cloud layer. We're on our background layer. We are going to make it visible so we can see what's going on. We want to go to right above it, go to create a new layer, which is a little plus sign. If you've used Photoshop before, it used to look like a little post-it. It's changed a little bit. All right, let's double click that and name it clouds. And push enter. All right, from there, let's go ahead and it's going to choose our colors for our clouds based on the colors in our foreground and background. So the first thing I'm gonna do is switch those and now I'm going to double click on my black. I don't want black. Maybe I want one of these blue colors from the sky or from the ocean to make my clouds with. All right, so my clouds now are going to be blue and white. So let's go to with our clouds layer active. We want to go to filter. We want to come down to render and we want to go ahead and tell it to make clouds. And see how we get a really nice cloudy effect in there. The brighter the blue, 
say you use a really bright blue in here, the brighter your clouds are going to be. I'm pretty happy with those clouds. Let's do a control S and save. All right, so now if we look at the end sample, we also see that it has another set of flowers down here. So how are we gonna get those flowers? We can go ahead and do a file and place embedded and go grab the flower2.psd and place. And because I was above clouds, now it's right there. I'm gonna hit enter to let it come in. And let's go ahead and move it above my pineapple. And grab my move tool and kind of put that flower over here in the corner a little bit. All right, so we've got that there. All right, now we're gonna play with the text a little bit. So let's go ahead and deselect, Control D or click out. I'm gonna Control Save what I've got. Let's go up and we wanna go ahead and make our Hawaii layer visible. Let's go ahead and make it active. Uh, let's go ahead and deselect to make sure nothing's active. We just wanna make sure we got it where we want. Let's go to the type tool and we wanna go ahead and grab the horizontal type tool. With that, we wanna grab the character panel, so window, and come down here to character. And that's going to pop up a number of different items for us that have to do with the actual font itself. So let's go ahead and choose some type of serif font. Remember serif has feet, uh, maybe a birch, maybe, let's try birch. So birch standard regular, that works. And let's, what else do they want us to do? About 36 points. Our style is regular. We want large tracking, which is the V slash A. So we want the letters to be relatively spread apart. Let's change that to 250. Let's go ahead and choose a different color. Let's go ahead and choose this grassy green that we chose before and say, okay. We want to make it, oh, say okay. We want to make it this faux bold, and we want to make it all caps. And for our anti-aliasing, we want to go ahead and make it crisp. All right, so just below the H, I still want vertical, I want horizontal. Just below H, we're going to go ahead and change that to be right aligned and it pops up lorem ipsum, that's okay. That's just so you can kind of see what's going on. Let's go ahead and write Island Paradise. All right, so I've got my Island Paradise. We can decide, hey, that color's really awful. I wanna go through, triple click on it, come into where the color's coming from, and decide, hey, maybe I wanna do this bright green here instead. Or maybe I wanna grab this pink. So you do have the option after the fact to go through and change that color up just a little bit. I'm not too happy with any of these colors so far. That's eh, not terrible. All right, let's choose that one for now. We're gonna choose any color. All right, it might not be exactly where we wanna position it, so we can actually go ahead and realign it a little bit, kind of bring it over. Now you should be able to get those smart guides to pop up and tell you you're in the middle of your Hawaii layer. You're centered with Hawaii, you center the other thing. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this Hawaii layer. And we're gonna grab, put a gradient on it. So we're on Hawaii. We're going to control and click the actual thumbnail, which is the little checkerboard. And it's going to select all the pixels in there. So we wanna go ahead and put in a gradient. So we want our gradient to have simple colors. So let's go over here underneath the paint bucket if you don't have it, your gradient tool. It's gonna to say, what colors do you want in your gradient? Right now it's choosing my colors from what the foreground and the background. So maybe I don't want that color. Maybe I want kind of a nice, well, let's do this pink and a white. So now I've got my pink and white so you can change those colors beforehand. I'm gonna go ahead and do a linear gradient. And you notice that it will only go in where the ants are. So if I click and hold and draw over, it's going to draw that pink over to the white, just like we see over here. If I don't like it that way, I can undo. You can do a really short one. 
you'll see a really sh a really tight color band. So it really depends on how you want those colors to come out. So go ahead, you can go from one side to another. You can do a lot of different things with that gradient. I'm going to go ahead from top to bottom here. I want a little crooked. I don't want to make, I, if you want to make sure you don't go crooked, hold shift as you pull down and it'll go exactly straight. All right, so let's go ahead and do a control S to save. Let's do a control D for deselect. So let's go ahead and do a few more things to our layers and our layer style. So let's look at our island paradise layer. It's kind of getting lost a little bit. We can make it pop a little bit more. So let's go to layer. Let's come down here to layer style and come down to drop shadow. Make sure your preview is turned on so you can see what's happening. So see how the drop shadow makes it pop just a little bit more. So we want our blend mode to be multiply. We want our opacity to be 75. So we're going to make it even darker. Our angle to be 78 degrees. Our distance to be 5. Our spread to be 30. We want it to be nice and bright, and our size to be 10. And global light is clicked and turned on. So we're happy with that. Let's go ahead and say, OK, that's pretty awesome. So now we want to make sure that we can use that style on something else. So we want to make sure we can use that style on this Hawaii layer instead also. So let's go ahead and click Alt on the FX see the FX comes with, come down to Hawaii, and it's going to apply that to the Hawaii also. So it makes it really nice and easy way to create an effect without having to duplicate all of your efforts and remember everything every time. So now those, now those letters really pop uh, much better. So let's also add a stroke to the Hawaii. So let's go here to Hawaii. Let's come down here to the bottom. FX at the bottom is effects. It's also layer effects. Let's go ahead and add stroke. It's going to say, okay, what kind of stroke do you want? And it's choosing that funky green that we might not want. Let's go ahead, choose size number four. We want it to be outside this time. So see how it moves it out. Our blend nope is normal. Our opacity is 100%. We don't want it to be. And let's go ahead and pick a different color of for the stroke. I'm going to go ahead and do this dark pink. Or you could choose green or whatever else you is you like. So I'm going to say OK when I'm happy with that. And let's say OK. Alright, let's go ahead and take a peek at a few other things. We still have that funky purplish flower, which maybe we don't want it to be purple. We can actually change that. Let's go ahead and come down here to our flower layer. With our fl flower layer, let's go to layer. Let's come down here to layer style. We want to go ahead and do drop shadow. All right, so our opacity is this one's going to be 60. We want our distance to be 13. Our spread to be 9. And global light and multiply. Don't press OK yet. We want to do something else also. Go ahead and click over here to satin. And you'll get a different set of uh, choices you can make. Let's go ahead and in the color mode, uh, let's go ahead and choose a kind of more of a fuchsia. So instead of this black, let's go ahead and choose maybe one of the pinks from in here. So that's changing that color a little bit. Say OK. Our opacity is going to be 20%. Our distance is going to be 22. And I'm still not happy with that color. Let's go ahead and pick a different color a little bit. Eh, let's try. Oh. All right, so we're going to say OK. So we've got that layer style there. So let's go do a Control S and save. So we've changed the color of that flower a little bit, made it stick out just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and grab that flower two layer again. It's still a little weird on the purple, not loving it. Let's go ahead and grab an adjustment layer. So let's go to hue adjustments. Let's go to hue and saturation. It's the first one in the second row. And let's go ahead and play with the hue of that color. We can go ahead and change the color. 
just by doing the hue. But you're going to notice right now we're changing everything underneath. We will fix that here in a second. So let's go ahead and make the hue 43. Let's make our saturation 19. Our lightness is 0. So everything underneath right now is that color, which we don't necessarily want. Okay, so we can do an OK. We're good with that one. So let's come down. So what we want to do is create a clipping mask so that those that hue and saturation only affects that flower underneath. So we're going to do a right click on hue and saturation and we're going to do create clipping mask. And notice how everything else returned to normal. So it's just, we see we've got this little arrow right here pointing that this is what's happening to just this layer. And that's exactly what we want. So let's do a control S and save what we've got so far. All right, so Island Paradise is a little bit big. Maybe we don't want it quite so large. Let's go ahead and grab that type tool, triple click. It'll grab the whole thing and let's make it a little bit smaller. It was 36, let's try 32 instead. And if you hit tab or enter, it will make it smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my move tool, scoot it over just a tiny bit. So I'm more centered. You can always go over and play with those with your arrows. All right, so let's go ahead and add a border to our entire thing. So let's go select the po let's select the postage layer. Now let's go ahead and move that to the middle ish. Oh, grab the flower instead of the postage. And undo. All right, so I want to auto select layers, part of my problem. All right, so I want to go back to my postage. Okay, so I've got my postage. I'm going to grab my postage. Undo. Control Z. All right, so I'm going to turn off this other stuff. I'll make it easier. Okay. Off. All right, now I'm grabbing the postage. I've got my move tool and I am just not winning today. Turn the clouds off. <laughs> All right, postage. There we go. Moving the postage down towards the middle here a little bit. All right, so let's turn everything back on. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and come down here to my Island Paradise layer and make sure we turn it back on. Make sure that we go ahead and we're going to add a border to this whole thing. So let's go ahead and add a new layer at the bottom. All right, we're going to come up here to select and go to select all. We're going to go to select, modify and we want to modify the border. So instead of having to draw another square on top of this or behind this, you can actually do it within what you already have. All right, so we want to make sure it's 10 pixels. Let's say OK. Let's go Edit and come down to Fill and choose the fill color. I'm going to go ahead and choose it to be white or maybe you want to do the foreground colors, one of those things you have to decide in advance. And let's say OK. So now I've got that border. I'm going to go over here to my layers panel where it's got layer one and right border. Okay, so now I can do deselect, control D. And I've got my nice white border there. Let's do a control S to save. So now you've got a image with a lot of layers to it right now, which is awesome, which means you can go through and change those individually, but sometimes you just need one image in order to place in your publication. So let's go ahead and do a file and save if we didn't already. Let's go to image and come down here to duplicate. And we're going to go ahead and make it a copy. So let's go ahead and do file, save as, instead of copy, let's make it flat. So we know which one is flattened. You don't want to flatten your original because then you cannot go back through and fix anything. So let's go ahead and say save. Wow, that's loud. All right, so I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click on my layers and do flatten image. 
So now, instead of having one with multiple layers, I have only one layer, which makes it a lot easier if you're going to go ahead and put this into another publication or something else. So it, it's always good to practice having one of each, one that's flat and one that's got layers, because you never know when you're going to want to change it from pink to green to uh, realize you had a typo in there after you've already put it in your publication. You don't want to redo the whole thing. So that is all you need to do for this one. Go ahead and turn in this Hawaii postcard.